I'm gonna do a double live here on the YouTube as well and see how it goes. But two bout songs today and maybe something else, I don't know. Two bout songs, maybe something else. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but let me know how you're doing. I'm always curious to see how everybody else is doing in the world. Um, it's funny, you know, I, I've, uh, hey, T-Whisperer, how's it going? Uh, I've, I've got friends all over the world, right? And, and so the T-Friends and, and T-People all over the world that I keep in contact with. And uh, what's really interesting is that I, you know, I get to hear what's going on from, from people all over the world as it's happening. Hey, how's it going? Um, oh, dude, you're actually in Dharamsala. Really? Do you whisper? I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't realize that. That's, um, that's an interesting place, and that's a place that, that my wife wants to spend her retirement in. So she wants to go there and teach, uh, teach Mandarin and, and be a part of the, sort of the whole cultural milieu in, in Dharamsala. Uh, but that's, that's, uh, we have a tea estate. Oh, really? You got a tea estate. Awesome. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, I knew you did lots of tea stuff. It pops up on my feet every once in a while. I didn't realize you guys had an actual tea estate. In Dharamsala, really? That's awesome. Then I have a reason to go when my wife wants to go. <laughs> After our kids are big enough to, to leave the nest. Um, I needed some quality tea over here in Maryland. Well, Maryland... I mean, the U.S. is so big, right? I mean, Maryland is... You don't hear very much about Maryland on the news, which is a good thing, right? It's, it's a great thing. At this point in the game, if you guys are not on the news, it's like, yay! <laughs> but how's everything going in Maryland? Um, I'm sure there's not too many hipster tea shops in Maryland. Okay, Maryland, tell me how long is the drive from Maryland to New York City? That's not something that I know. So I... You know, New England. You know, I grew up in Toronto, right? So it's like, okay, I kind of know. But Maryland to New York City would be how, how long is the drive? Um, uh, I hope to send you some of our finest once it's all done and dusted. I'd, I'd love some. We can do a trade. I'd love to do a trade for some tea. What type of tea do you, what type of tea do you make? Um, I would love to show you and your family around this amazing place. Well, I don't know whether my boys will come. Um, by then, they'll be a little bit older, and they'll be like, I don't want to travel with my mom and dad. Uh, but who knows? Maybe. Maybe. But uh, I, I have to admit, I, I've been to over 30 different countries in the world. I've never been to India. Uh, but I do find India intimidating to travel to. Definitely. So it would help. It would help if... Uh, <laughs> it would help if... Uh, um, if there was somebody who could show us around and help us out in that respect. Uh, it's funny, I live in Taiwan, right? And Taiwan is, uh, I always call Taiwan Asia light, right? So Taiwan is Asia light. And, and why is it Asia light? Well, it's, it's got all the, the fun stuff about Asia, the great food and sort of the, the culture milieu and all these types of things. But it's one of the safest nicest friendliest people easy to get around it's very much asia light so i get, I get spoiled here <laughs> i always feel sorry for people who travel to taiwan first before they go to china because they're such different countries um uh very few in baltimore and dc new york is about three to four hours or three to five hours okay 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 i got it okay um okay well, that, that area, it's like I, I send a lot of tea to New England, right? Boston, um, I don't know if New York counts, but I send a lot of tea to all these different places. And it's, it's funny, right? Especially because it's the Instagram thing, right? It's the Instagram sort of tea subculture. There's a lot of very isolated people all over the world uh, that, that love tea. And, uh, and if, you know, if you have your own, your own little tea group, chances are you're not that active on Instagram. But if you're active on Instagram then chances are you don't actually have your really like a, a really close uh, tea group, you know, sort of a thing. So I, it's always funny because, you know, sometimes, especially like a country like uh, Luxembourg, I mean, I can't send tea right there, there right now, but I send tea to so many people in Luxembourg. I really should be like, you guys should do a meetup if you don't know each other because it's, you know, it's so small. 
Uh, we make Orthodox, the first and second flush, hand-rolled roasted green, silver needle. We also make Lapsang, Souchong, and gunpowder. Wow, that's a lot of tea. That's a lot of tea. And uh, how were you guys, Darm Salad? did you guys get hit with all the lockdowns and things like that? Was it a, a rough one? Because I know I heard stories about uh, Assam having real hard problems with production and the Darjeeling farms, like the first flush was basically just taken out. Nobody, there's no first flush uh, for them. Uh, but I'm curious how you guys handled it. Hopefully it was, it was good. Why don't we get to the teas? So today we have two monk teas. Yesterday we do monk teas. Yes, we did. So more monk teas. And, and we're doing a lot of monk teas because right now in Taiwan, we're in what's called the plum rains. And it's not like in uh, monsoon, monsoon places, right? It's not like in, for example, Cambodia, where you've got this long, long, long dry season. And then all of a sudden, boom, right? Like all of a sudden you get all of this rain. It's not like that in Taiwan, but we do have this rainy season in May and early June. And what happens is they call them the, the plum rains. And when they show up, you've got five, six, seven days of just straight up pouring rain, right? Just pouring rain. And in the mountains, like the mountain roads just get, just get hammered. And, uh, and so the reason that I am, uh, the reason that I'm doing these teas right now, for the, all the teas from the monk fellow, uh, and nuns is because simply because I don't have a lot of new teas. I mean, I got a couple new teas in a couple new teas. There's the, the spring alley shine and things like that, but I've really, 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 really got to go to, um, like I gotta go up I gotta go to Li Shan the Li Shan tea is ready it's waiting for me there to drink uh, it's raining here too well hopefully it doesn't rain quite as hard and as long as it does in Taiwan <laughs> we have five or six days and we're looking at like in total it'll probably be in, in the hardest hit areas it'll be like a meter of rain oh guys damn it Anyway, so what this is, um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do, I'm going to do this Gong Fu style. So I'm going to do 30 seconds on this T right here. And so this is, this is annoying. So what this is, <laughs> ah, the monks, the monks and nuns, again, they are not exactly the most, um, they don't do this for money, right? I mean, they do do it for money. They'd like to do it for money. Um, they do need the money, but they're not doing it for the money. So what that is, is a piece of the bamboo mat, right? So this is a piece of the bamboo mat. And when they're moving it around, when they're doing all the stuff around, they, uh, this here you can see, this is a piece of the bamboo mat. So um, I would not recommend drinking this. If you get this tea and you get a piece of the bamboo mat in there, don't, don't drink it. Uh, it's, it. They come by it honestly. They come by it honestly. Uh, if anybody's gotten a, a poor cake from from uh, from China, then you sort of know the things you get in there. Uh, I had one cake that was full of it wasn't this is the bamboo, so it's a piece of bamboo from the bamboo mat. But I actually got one cake from China that was all particle board. So there's particle board all through the tea, and and it was disgusting. I've never had such a nasty tea. It was so gross, so gross. Um, but you know that the the tea cakes you know from from China you often get hairs and all sorts of nuts and bolts and all sorts of different things, especially the shows. Um, in Taiwan, it's a lot less common. <laughs> but so when you're dealing with with uh, these productions, it, it often happens. Anyway, so let's get back to the teas. What are these teas? These are two beautiful, beautiful baozongs. Right, they are from the Pingling area. Uh, one of them, I can't remember which is which, but that's okay. I'll sniff and, and be able to actually, I can sort of just by looking at them right now, I can tell. One is a very, very, very traditional Baozong. So Baozong, uh, for people that don't know, Baozong is a lightly oxidized oolong from just traditionally made just outside of Taipei. The elevation in Pingling where this is made is only about 500, four to, four to 600 meters above sea level. But it's in the north of Taiwan, so the weather is actually relatively similar to the high mountains, right? So it's in the north, 
It's got all these north winds come and buttress this sort of the first layer of mountains. And so that, that area is quite cold in winter. Like every, every couple of years it actually snows there, which is uh, very similar to a lot of the, the tea plantations in the high mountains, of course. And they produce this Baozong. This Baozong is, it's got a very, very long history, but it's a lightly oxidized oolong. So you're looking at five to 8% oxidized. It's strip, right? So it's not ball rolled. And the way they basically do it is they cut the tea, they bring it in, they let it wither. Uh, then they, they do the, uh, they withers, then it, they do a roll, uh, they let it sit for a bit, and then they fix it, they roll it again, and then they dry it, and that's basically it. Right, so, and various places do different, different things. Anyways, that's, that's how they, they do it. Basically, that's how you make the bout song. That doesn't sound quite right. You pick it, you weather it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting brain fat on the bout song here. Uh, what do you do after you, you fix it? You fix it. Yeah, you fix it. You fix it, and then you roll it, and then you dry it. There we go. You fix it, then you roll it, and then you dry it. Sorry. Um, I don't know why I'm not... Not uh, not there with that, but it, it's a very lightly oxidized oolong. Um, uh, can, can you answer my DM about the subscription? I uh, want to sign up for their yearly subscription. Okay, uh, but remember, I can't offer any uh, uh, discounts for the, the subscription. Um, and and so what I've got here are two of these these really beautiful teas, right? So they're done by the monks and nuns up on the mountain. And these teas are, how best to describe it? Well, they're different cultivars, right? So this one here is Chin Chin. So Chin Chin is the high altitude elevation cultivar from all over the world, this is it, right? Or sorry, all over Taiwan. Anything above five or 600 meters in a cold environment is this cultivar, and this is what they, they grow. And then this one here, it's, this one here is the Tieguanin cultivar. So Tieguanin, let's go into Tieguanin for a second. Tieguanin is the name of a style of tea and the name of uh, a cultivar. And the only thing that's consistent, the only thing that's consistent with Tieguanin is, out of those two things, is the name, right? The name of the cultivar, that's consistent. What is considered a Tieguanin tea is just... In Taiwan, a Taiwanese tea is heavily oxidized, heavily roasted oolong. In China, a Taiwanese oolong could be that. It could be a lightly oxidized tea. It could be all sorts of different things. So what you have is one, the name of the cultivar, right? So just the name of the cultivar. Two, the processing style. Name of the cultivar and what the cultivar is is static. The processing style is all over the place. All over the place. It's just insanely all over the place. And so this tea... This Baozong, made with a Tieguanin cultivar, is relatively rare. It's very rare, actually. Most of the time, the Baozongs are made with this Qingqing cultivar and uh, the, the Jinchen, the Milk Wulong cultivar. Now, smelling these teas right now, like I, I can smell them coming off after I put some hot water on them. It's like, this one's so strong. <laughs> this one's so strong, right? So Baozongs when you have a baozong and when you're trying to do a baozong what you're trying to create with the baozong the flavor is light flowing uh super floral if you hit if you get the jinchuan and you hit it just right you can get a creamy floral imagine like a uh a sweet uh lightly milky broth with like a jasmine flower that's gone like this and taken out really quickly i mean that's that's what it can be that's what it can be. And this one gets there, although not, not so much with the, the creaminess. Um, but this one here is just a completely different beast because it's using a, a different cultivar. So the Tieguanin cultivar, especially the one that's used in Taiwan, um, is very, very rarely lowly oxidized. It's usually, because uh, the Muzha Tieguanin, which is around the same area, is the most famous sort of Taiwanese in Taiwan. 
And for me, I've never really smelled the tea like this. Like it's it's such a strange one. All right, let's go in and do some. Oh yeah, here, smell this one. And this one is so beautiful, but it's so much lighter than this. This is strong. <laughs> it's a really strong smell. Really strong. Really strong tea. Whereas this one is uh, light and honey, tinged with honey, a beautiful, soft floral coming out of that. Anyways, we just did 30 seconds on these, so let's, let's go, let's try these out. Classic, beautiful Baozong flavor, right? That's, that's what this tea is. It's, it's light and thick at the same time, uh, the up front, a little bit vegetal, super floral, and then just like right across, super clear mouthfeel. Um, this one is made with the Chin Chin cultivar, which is not the milk oolong cultivar, so the, the mid-mouth is, is clear. It's not really thick and milky like it would be with the Jin Tren. Now with this first steep, the aftertaste hasn't really started yet, but you're really getting that up front sort of beautiful... Uh, grassy floral thing. Anyway, so let's go. Let's go to this one here, which is the Tiguanin. Oh, it's such a different beast. So different. I, again, same tea garden, same hands, same uh, bamboo mats. <laughs> like it's all the same. It's all the same. Right? It's all the same. Just a different cultivar. And the upfront of this cultivar is so Tiguanini. <laughs> it's so Tiguanini, or whatever the hell that means, right? Um, <laughs> uh, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> uh, I can, uh, if there's a tea that's like, uh, I know you said before you didn't like the sort of the bitter stuff. If, there, if there's a tea that's like super, super bitter, I can try and change it out. Um, but generally speaking, there's not too many bitter teas uh, that go in those. Sometimes there is, though. Sometimes I, I'm like, this is a bitter tea. You can try it out. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, but the, uh, like I said, the, the upfront of this is like, it's just a, it's just a different beast, right? It's like this, the Taiwanese flavor. Right, so super vegetal, like a strong vegetal, right? Like a, um, I don't even know how to sort of describe it. It's like a, it's like a strong vegetal with a. It's got more of a thicker mid mouth, but both of these teas have a beautiful aftertaste. But they haven't really started in the. Uh, they haven't really started yet. So after this steep, there'll be more of that coming back. There'll be more of that, that beautiful aftertaste. And I'll talk about the difference between the aftertaste right here. Um, vegetal like biomass. Um, that is a great question. Uh, I don't think I've ever talked about it before. Uh, so when I say vegetal, uh, I would say, so what does vegetal mean to me? Uh, vegetal means to me, great one. Uh, biomass so for me my connotation of biomass uh, I noticed that Teguanian has a lot of stem um, perhaps they both do maybe uh, when I sent them out in the uh, when they when I sent them out in the boxes it's like <laughs> it's uh, sometimes it'll be near the bottom of the bag so there'll be less stem and the ones at the top will have a little bit more stem I, I personally, like Baozong's, uh, sorry for the tangent, uh, um, sorry for the tangent, the uh, Baozong's traditionally when they're put into the competitions, all the stems are taken out. I personally don't like the Baozong's with the stems taken out. I like the earthiness and the grounding nature of the stems. So when I buy the teas, uh, and for the record, I don't pay less money, right? More money goes to the farmer, right? More money goes to the farmer. Uh, I pay the same price, but I say, hey, listen, if you haven't picked out the stems, don't worry about it. I, I like the stems. Uh, 
Uh, so there will be mixes in the amount of stems. Uh, maybe maybe that's the one that you uh, that you had there that was just more um, maybe near the top of the bag where all the stems were. Uh, but generally speaking, they're both like this one here was at the bottom of the bag. This is the Taiwanese, and there's no stems at all. Whereas this one here was uh, near the top of the bag, and you can see there's there's more stems on this one. Um, but uh, and just before, because it is the internet, right? I don't pay I don't pay less money because I keep the stems in. I, I just I I prefer the taste of the tea with the stems. Um, but who knows? Maybe I'll do something where you know I'll, I'll get a separated and a stem one. You guys can try it in a in a, in a box one of these days. Um, anyway, sorry. Let's go back to so biomass like greeny grassy. Uh, for me, biomass would be like a compost pile. That would be my connotation of it. I'm no right and wrong. That's just my connotation of it. When I am talking about vegetal, I'm definitely talking about green leaves, right? So for me, vegetal could be anywhere from uh, fresh cut grass, light flowery flowing fresh cut fr fresh cut grass to uh cabbage even asparagus uh or like vegetable like blanched vegetable right broccoli or something like that so when i'm talking about vegetal i'm talking about green green leaves something like that usually when i'm talking about uh and again what i would consider biomass which would be like uh like leaf litter or something like that uh then i'd say dry leaf litter or um Clean compost pile. Uh, TJ, how's it going? Uh, clean compost pile. I don't drink a lot of I don't drink a lot of Chinese tea, so so clean compost pile is not. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't. When I'm writing descriptions for teas, I don't use wormy very often. Um, again, no value judgment, right? I just I just don't use it very often. <laughs> there can be there can be uh, wormy teas that are exceptional teas. Uh, let's see. Oh, you can see the difference here. Okay, so so here, this is the chin chin. It's a darker color. This is the this is the teguanine, and it's a lighter color. All right, let's go into the second steep of these teas here. Mm. So with the second steep, that that baozong floral is just it's coming, right? It's just there. Touch of the the aftertaste now is starting. It's a sweet sour fruit. Um, usually you only get that aftertaste with really high elevation stuff but like I said this area is in the north and it's cold so uh, it's only about 500 meters above sea level but it, it you get that high mountain goodness dreaming about the teas coming my way well it looks like the delays have um, you, you'll have to forgive me if I don't remember exactly <laughs> where your tea is going to if it was from me even uh, but generally speaking to the states uh and to england as well nah, england's still a little slow but to the states it's sped up a lot uh so it's sped up a lot so in the states the uh people have already been getting the may box and the may box was sent out like may 5th or something like that it was a long weekend the may 1st long weekend so it was like may 5th or may 6th that it was sent out and people have already started getting the boxes so uh, before it was a week before that that people were getting the April boxes so it's faster it's two weeks now which is awesome uh, I need one of those t-shirts oh Canada oh then never mind never mind you have anybody in the states that could ship it to you <laughs> it's uh, I won't go on that rant but it's really starting to bother me uh, all this stuff, how I can't send tea to to Canada, of all places. It's like, you know, anyways, whatever. Uh, patience is a virtue. Uh, <laughs> patience is a virtue. Would it be like... <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, patience is a virtue. For sure. Um <laughs> Uh, Canada is screwed. I, I don't know about that. I, they're, uh, they're, the housing market is going to burst and that's going to be quite terrible. But like my family in Toronto, you know, everybody's losing their jobs. Everything's shut down. All the businesses are going out of business, but people uh, are, are doing okay. Not a lot of sick people, which is nice. Anyways, whatever. I, who knows? Six months from now, it's going to be a different world. 
I'll enjoy them even more. I hope you do. And I hope when it opens up, they they do something like they just have this one big train of flights that go over. And... You see, that's the thing, right? Right now, there's so many, uh, there's so much demand for sending packages to all of these various countries from Taiwan that there doesn't seem to be a reason why they're not doing it, right? That there's got to be an economically viable way of sending out all these packages, right? Just just like three cargo planes or five or six or whatever it is. I mean, they just fill it up with mail. There's mail waiting to go. Anyways, maybe they'll do it. Um, anyways, yeah, so there's the, the second steep on these beautiful bao tongs, and now we're going to go to the second steep on this. i got to drink it fast. This is a minute one. And this is so different. The vegetal on this is stronger. It's got a, a milkier mouthfeel. The nature of the cultivar is so different. And they're both just, just beautiful teas. But I, I will say this for sure, the Tiaguanin cultivar is a much, much stronger cultivar than the Qingqing cultivar when done in this way. Um, so much stronger it's so much stronger <laughs> right light wispy ethereal sort of all that flowy flowery stuff up above the tops you know and then this one here um, is wow. the aftertastes are fighting in my mouth right now it's a pleasant feeling Oh, right, here we go. So that was a minute steep on these. So again, uh, why I'm doing this is because I've actually got some a little bit of time right now. Thank you to everybody who's ordered. Thank you so much to everybody who's ordered. Um, I do have some teas to pack today, which is nice. That always makes me happy. And But I haven't really had a time to sit down and do a real... I bought these teas. I shipped them out. Uh, they're selling pretty well. And uh, But I, I don't have all... I usually don't have very much time just to sort of sit and, and drink these teas. And so that's kind of why I wanted to do it. As well, there was uh, a very nice gentleman today who wrote me a message that I read when I was half asleep and then uh, I totally forgot about it <laughs> and, then, and then I'm like oh what am I going to drink today and I drank the teas he was talking about <laughs> um, but, uh, but anyways so there's the third steep right vegetal floral sweetness just good Wow. Again, much stronger vegetal, much stronger aftertaste. Now, I would say this, right? Straight up, I prefer this one, right? I prefer the classic Baozong taste. I prefer the classic Baozong. And um, there's a bunch of different reasons why. But uh, basically, it's just sort of, you know, it was one of the first teas that I ever really got to know really well was the Bao Songs. And one of the teas that I, I sourced uh, consistently were these Bao Zong teas from Pingming. And, and so I have uh, an idea of what they should taste like. Right. So there's also the Old Master Bao Tong, which is one of my favorite teas. Hopefully that'll be coming into stock in the next uh, couple weeks. Only like a kilogram of it. Um, that'll sell out pretty quick. And I like these teas because of the, I guess the, the taste journey. <laughs> you know, like when, when you're drinking a Bao Tong, you are, you're not looking to get, you know, really hit, you know, like Baozongs are not like that, right? They are, they are teas that, the good ones anyways, 
are teas that are uh, very distinct in their upfront, in their mid mouth, in their back end. The high quality ones, they sort of meld and, and, and move around. You're able to breathe out a lot of the flavors. Right? So with the really good bow tones, you're you uh, you can literally sort of breathe out like with the aftertaste right now. I'm feeling it. I'm tasting it really, really, really strongly right here, and you can breathe it out. You know, it's like a you know, it's almost like a perfumey type of thing. And um, and even now with this, it's actually doing okay. Right now, I'm, I'm just sort of blasting these for the last little <laughs> um, flavor getting out of them. But uh, there's a thickness to it, a sweetness to it, and that whole package really is, in the classic bow tone, that whole package is so good. Um, and uh, once you've had a really good one, it's really hot, tough to go to the cheap ones because there's a lot of cheap bouts on out there as well. Now, I, I'm just enjoying this tea so much, drinking this tea right now, this chin chin one, right? This just, it's hitting all of my, my check marks, right? So uh, one of the reasons why, and I'll, I'll try to, to say this without being in a, uh, a, a bad word that starts with A and where poop comes out. Because <laughs> um, I, can't, I can't say bad words on, on, on social media anymore. Um, a lot of people, they don't like organic teas because they say they are too light. And it's too light, it's too light. Uh, there's not enough flavor. Uh, I, can't, I can't get that really that burst out of that. And, and it's valid, most organic teas are super light and they don't really give you a, a flow. They don't really give you a flow. They don't really give you a, um, basically what they are, lighter versions of conventional teas. So a conventional tea will give you this big upfront taste, nothing in the mid mouth, nothing in the back end, but upfront, boom, you know, like that's oolong and then nothing, nothing. Um, Whereas a lot of the organic teas out there, they are gonna give you uh, a mild upfront and then nothing else. And if you're used to drinking those really good tea, those really uh, conventional strong teas, and then this, this other tea, uh, you go like, why would you ever, that's double the price and I'm never ever gonna touch that. But the good organic teas take, like if you imagine uh, the conventional teas 100% in the upfront, with the good organic teas, you have the same amount, but it's 30%, 30%, you know, 50%. <laughs> it goes up to 110, right? So 30% in the upfront, 30% in the mid-mouth, and then that aftertaste and lingering, lingering, lingering feeling of the good organic teas lasts forever. You know, like I can still very pleasantly taste this tea, right? Like I go like that, my saliva is all this tea, everything about, everything about my mouth even when I'm breathing out still after talking so much and, and doing all the BS, you know, it's still like, I'm still, it's still there. And that's for me, like the really high quality organic teas, that's what you're getting. You're getting this multi-layered, almost um, much more of a meditative thing, you know, like it's just, anyways, that's, for me, right, when I'm making the choices what teas to buy, to, to gamble on, put on the site, that's a, that's a big one for me. Um, which is a really long description of why to say that I enjoy this tea more than this tea. Right. <laughs> now, this tea is also quite good. By no means am I saying this tea is bad. But from the start, when I drink this tea, the upfront grab, this tea is more like a... Um, 40%, 30%, 40%, something like that. Maybe more 50%, 25%, 45%, something, something like that. Anyways, there's, there's so much going on in this tea and it's not, it's like in the same ballpark. It's playing the same game as the Baozong tea, right? It's playing the same game, but the vegetal is a little bit stronger and a little bit more sour than I'm than I'm used to. 
the mid mouth is thicker and uh, it's not creamy, it's buttery, <laughs> you know, and then, and then in the back end, um, there is, uh, there is that Tiguanine taste, which when it's roasted becomes um, vanilla, it becomes deep dark fruits, vanilla and deep dark fruits, but when it's green, it's a little bit more grassy vegetal, right? A little bit more grassy vegetal. And again, totally subjective, totally subjective in every sense. Okay, well, thank you very much, and, and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later. Have an absolutely wonderful night. Hope you sleep well. But there we go. There's my, um, now that I'm chasing away all the people, <laughs> there's my, uh, my esoteric <laughs> justifications for my own personal subjective preferences. <laughs> and the, uh, the existential difference between these two teas. Um, here again, you can see the, the difference in the color of these, these teas, right? This is the Tiguanin, it's much, much lighter. This is the uh, the greener tea, and it's much, much, much greener. Or sorry, the Chin Chin. Well, actually, it's literally called like Green Heart or Clear Heart or Light Green Blue Heart <laughs> or Center. <laughs> I don't. I, it's one of my pet peeves, but in Taiwan, they've they've. They've got all these new cultivars coming out. So there's the Ruby 18, there's number 21, there's number 20. Uh, and they have all of these names that are not quite as, as cool as they were before. Uh, hey man, how's it going? So like before you, like Qin Xin, how that would directly translate Qin. Qin means either clear, <coughs> like a light green, a mix between green and blue. <coughs> it's got all of these different meanings. Right, really deep meanings, and it's using a lot of poetry. And then Xin means center, heart. Zhong Xin means like center, like community center. Right, so it's used in Xiao Xin, which means small heart, means dangerous or be careful. Sorry, be careful, not dangerous. And um, and so it's you like you put those two words together, Qin Xin, and you can go, you can wax poetical on the meaning of it. What is that in English? You know, what is that in Spanish? What is that in all these different languages? And you can wax polite, like just, just so deep. And then they got, you know, like Hong Yu, which is red jade. Ruby, or red jade, ruby, red jade, 18. <laughs> you know, or like Yin Xiang, which is like, <laughs> like welcome and sweet smelling fragrance. Come on. Uh, kind of like, what's the findings between the two cultivars? I just spent like 15 minutes chasing people away by describing the difference between the cultivars. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, classic, uh, fresh, if you're gonna do like, so it would be like 30, 30, 50, right? Up front, 30% of the flavor, mid mouth, eh, 25, 20, 25. Back end, you got 50, right? Which is over 100%, right? This one you've got maybe 40 in the upfront with a, like that Tiguanine vegetal, sort of that, that slightly sour vegetal, more like an asparagus vegetal, whereas this one is more like a fresh cut grass mixed with, okay, 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 here we go, ready? You take a weed whacker, right? You take a weed whacker and there is, an, there is a, a jasmine bush that's been abandoned, right? There's a jasmine bush that's been abandoned. And then there's like four or five jasmine flowers that have just sort of started to open. And then up, growing up through it is like a really fresh, beautiful, vibrant grass, right? And then you take the weed whacker and you just, <laughs> you just buzz the whole damn thing. That's the flavor in the upfront of this. <laughs> so whatever smell would be coming off of that would be, would be the, the smell of this. And then sort of a clear, sweet mid-mouth, and then that, 
that lingering, beautiful aftertaste that, uh, that I enjoy so much for the Chin Chin cultivar. Um, I know what that smells like. Literally, I have a jasmine bush surrounded by grass. Well, there you go. <laughs> Don't take a weed whacker to it, <laughs> but you could like, just take your hands out there and go like, and you get the same, <clears throat> you get the same, uh, the same general idea. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Anybody who's been around a, a jasmine bush that's got those beautiful, um, quite messy looking, but wildly fragrant, um, the, the, the white flowers um and that's the chin chin yes yeah that's the chin chin and uh and so this is the the chin chin here and the aftertaste on this is full-on like pear mountain fruit aftertaste but let's see if i can count it down mm. four seconds and then you get the the sweet sour fruit Right, that one is an, an off ripe mango. Right, not quite ripe mango. Um, gorgeous. It's this tea. I, I just love it. Then over here you got the the tea guanin, which is a much stronger, like buzzing back asparagus bushes, and then um, a milkier mouthfeel, thicker, more coating the tongue, and then the aftertaste is is like unroasted tequani, right? So a little milky, a little eggy, but not in a bad way, egg yolk -y, sweet egg yolk, something like that. Uh, that image is a bit extreme. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, uh, this, is my, this is my creative outlet, right? So this is my creative outlet. Um, <laughs> And you could you could get the same thing by just brushing your hands against that that thing you know just sort of you probably get the same smell. Um, <laughs> uh, I love getting mango and teas. Uh, only got in it Angie Bai Cha and a Baozong of yours. Angie Bai Cha, really? Oh, that's that's pretty cool. That'd be fun. Um, oh, and the experimental Indian white green of yours. Oh yeah, that tea. That was a weird one, wasn't it? It was a beautiful tea, but it was so strange. For me, I got like bone broth, like a, like a thick soup um, out of that tea. I might still have a little bit of it somewhere floating around. That was such an interesting tea. It was a fascinating tea. But um, the amount of samples I got in, it's the Indian tea culture is still in its infancy. I know it's been hundreds of years, but it's still in its infancy. Um, I was quite amazed at uh, at the wide range of, <clears throat> of inconsistencies. It was fascinating, actually, to drink through those teas. But it was really tough. I'm such a... <laughs> I looked it up last night, because I use this word often, right? And I was like, just I just want to make sure it's got, the, it's got the right meaning that I think it means. And yes, I'm such a Taiwanese chauvinist. <laughs> Jingoist <laughs> when it comes to Taiwanese teas. I'm a Taiwanese tea chauvinist. Um, uh, but I'd, I'd, I'd love somebody else to, to curate Indian teas. Somebody else out there could curate Indian teas and, and we could do some ex exchanges. I'd love that. I would love that. Um, but a lot of the Indian teas were, were really strong for me. Um, but uh, but yeah, this one, this one has, this Chin Chin one definitely has it. And hopefully next week, I can send it to you. I mean, just get on the phone. I'm sure Duarte's got a, like a, you know, one of those Venezuelan TV talk shows where he talks to people. <laughs> um, he's a man of the people, right? So I'm sure, uh, I'm sure he's got one of those talk shows. So phone him up and be like... <clears throat> I'm waiting on my tea from Taiwan. Can we can we get it shipped in? But it's uh, supposed to be delayed until the 25th. We'll just see how it goes. Does Duarte have one of those? Um, how about you trade with Indian Chen guy with your Taiwanese Shen? I. It's actually a pretty good idea, actually. 
because I think some of the, the kettle, kettle. Oh, I forget the name of it now. Anyways, kettle tea or something like that. Um, anyways, it, some of this tea looks really, really interesting. And I would like to do it. And it's certainly handmade, <clears throat> hand produced teas. So what I would do to create the perfect tea <clears throat> would be to take the butteriness of this and plop it into here, and then this tea would be perfect. This tea is only missing a little bit of the butteriness. Uh, the mid mouth is, is a little bit too clear. That one took a little bit longer, but there's a beautiful fruit sweetness in there. Uh, saw a site and he has a high mountain green oolong. <laughs> Trade with yours. <laughs> I don't know if I can. I, I don't know if I can send tea to. I should be able to be able to send tea to. Uh, <coughs> I should be able to India I don't know I haven't shipped an AT to India for uh, quite some time so I don't know whether I could I could send it but he seems like a really nice guy so I should uh, I should ask mm. this is unripe mango aftertaste there you go I'm really looking forward to the spring pear mountain I want to get up there and I want to get that spring pear mountain. I want to see it. I want to taste it. I want to buy it and bring it down. But like I say, we're, we're in like the middle of the, the real monsoon season for what it means in Taiwan. Now, the monsoons in Taiwan are not the same as they are in most other places of the world, right? They're, they're just like four or five days of solid rain across the entire island. And actually in Hualien, we're okay. We're doing fine. Uh, it's not even... Oh, no, I shouldn't say that. It is raining right now. But in other parts of uh, Taiwan, it's torrential rain, like flooding and, and different things like that. Whereas where we are here, it's okay. But I can't risk those mountain roads. I cannot risk those mountain roads. Those mountain roads are, they're just, <laughs> they're insane. Um, uh, when I bought my teas, I didn't see the Mang Chin Chin Bao song, so I only bought the Tie Guan Yin one. I think I... I noticed that, and I think I, I gave you a, a sample of this tea. This one. I think I did. Anyways, your, your thing's right here. I haven't sealed it up yet. Um, your package is right here. I haven't sealed it up yet. But uh, have no fear. There will be some of it in there. 100%. You will have some chin chin bao in there. I'm actually going to buy some more of it today. And buy some more of those, uh, buy some more of these cakes. Because they are very nice cakes. And I, I'm, I'll probably put a, an option for some sample sizes of those cakes as well. Because um, I've got access to a bunch of them now. Uh, and in the past, they sold out so fast, I didn't even bother uh, putting in the sample sizes. Because <laughs> 20 of them, I put 20 up, they'd be gone in a day. And now... Uh, now I've got access to more of them, so I can do sample sizes <coughs> for those uh, for those tea cakes. But uh, hey, no problem, man. I mean, that's um, I think I saw your order and I noticed that you didn't have it, and then I was like, oh, my fault. <laughs> it's probably not in there, so so I uh, I got you some. Um, but yeah, uh, this tea I gotta buy some more of this tea actually. Um, yeah, I would love some samples so I won't have to dig into my cake. Yeah, because it's... Um, you can see here, this is... Uh, these cakes, they're, they're an interesting one. And, and for people that have had the, the ta other Taiwanese sheng, they're very similar to the Taiwanese sheng, but not quite as uh, mind-bending, <laughs> both in good and bad ways. I mean, uh, those other Taiwanese shengs could be a little bit strong <laughs> this one is much more forgiving it's a much much more forgiving group uh, 
and it's uh, but it's it's very similar. It's a very similar tea, quite a beautiful tea as well. Okay, so I think that's about it. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Um, any questions about anything for any of the stuff that was on here today? Uh, I'm going to see what the weather does. I'm hoping that on Sunday I can brave the mountain roads and go up into the mountains and finally, finally, finally get some tea. If not, then on Monday. Um and get that pair of mountain stuff. Once I get the pair of mountain stuff, I'm going to put up a thing together. It'll be like, I'm hoping to keep it under $20. Excuse me, I'm hoping to keep it under $20. I'd like to keep it uh, around $15. So you get a sample size of five different uh, springtime teas. So you get the, the Alisham, the Spring Pear Mountain, uh, the, uh, the Alishan, the Spring Pear Mountain, um, the Gardenia, <laughs> That's the second day in a row. I can't remember. Anyways, whatever. Uh, in terms of mind-bending tea, my favorite uh, form of census is actually the HR. There's a lot of people that have said that a lot, uh, which is which is fascinating for me because it didn't really come into its own until it had been made for about six months, and so I'd sampled it all through that six months time period, and I was like, this HR doesn't make any sense. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it. And then one day, I tried it, and I was like. This is great. <laughs> I'm gonna buy this, <laughs> and uh, so hopefully, hopefully next year we can we can make a bunch of it because it really is uh, that HI really is a fun tea. It's a fun tea, and it's it's really unique. You know, I think it's it's a super unique tea. Uh, I hope my shem would age to something like that when it ages. I think it. Well, who knows? I hope so too. But I think there'll be more of a kick to it. There'll be more of a kick to the shem as it ages. Um, I agree. It's amazing and quite complex. Yes, yeah. It seems like uh, it took me completely off guard, completely off guard. And uh, like I said, and I think it really is. Uh, did I say it? Yeah, I could argue that. I could argue that that it is the um, that it is the uh, best expression of that that tea leaf that I've had. No, I won't say that. I won't say that. Anyways, it's, it's great. <laughs> it's great. But to say it's the best expression, I don't know that. Some of that Sheng is really good. Uh, I like the body feel. It hits my shoulders. Feels like a massage. I can see that. I definitely see that. Um, it was quite rough when it, when it was first finished. But now it's, it's great. But I haven't had it in months. Just months and months I haven't had that tea. But um, that reminds me, I should try and phone my buddy again. Anyways, uh, there we go. So that's that's it for now. I hope everybody has an absolutely wonderful afternoon, evening, weekend, wherever in the world you happen to be in, whatever you are doing at the moment. Um, yeah, this Chin Chin Bao Tong is one of the best Bao Tongs we've had on the site in a couple of years. Um, I even prefer it to last year's Old Master Bao Tong. Old, last, the Old Master Bao Tong oftentimes has a couple of edges, but this one has no edges. Uh, anyways, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful time. Thanks for stopping by, and see you next time.